Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin, and today we are listening to Cross Eyed Mary uh, from Jethro Tull off of their album Aqua Lung, released in 1971. You guys have been patiently, ever so patiently, uh, waiting for me to get back to Jethro Tull. So, first of all, thank you for waiting. Can you guys go cross eyed? Can hold on. Did I do it? Does this look really weird? I don't know if I'm doing it or not, but I'll find out when I'm editing this video. You guys can join me on Twitter. You guys can join me in the comments down below. I hope that you're enjoying the videos. If you enjoy any of the videos, please press the share button. Join me on Twitter. Join me in the comments, etc., etc. Let's do it. This is Cross-Eyed Mary by Jethro Tull. <laughs> Oh, it's 
I gotta say one thing about the song, and that's that Jethro Tull comes together so well with all their instruments in it. Because at moments, uh, a lot of the different sounds and instruments would come out and really stand out. And I was like making men's notes like, oh, that's really cool. Remember to talk about that. And then someone else would come in. The guitar would come in uh, with these dirty riffs. And I'd be like, oh, I definitely got to mention that. Like there were a lot of moments where each one of them shined uh, individually, but they all brought it together. They all brought their A game uh, when playing as a team, when coming together as a band. One thing that I, I've heard from Aqualung, uh, the song, uh, and then moving into this one, is they have such an underbelly, uh, seed of the underworld, dirty, grungy sound, at least in this album thus far. Great bass work, by the way. I really like the bass work, especially in the beginning, uh, playing along with the flutes. That was really nice. I like that. With the simple percussion. And then as it broke into that first verse, I liked the drum breaks that were allowed to fill in space. And of course, the riffing would come back. I really like the ending. Um, drum fills with just the kick. That was really nice. I like that a lot. With the flute again, and the guitar playing on that back and forth, and then the piano. That is so cool. I love the way that they all kind of play together. That's awesome. The percussion and that kick drum was like the, the rhythm, and that was the main beat. And then in the little fills, they all came and did a little something. That's cool. That's unity. That's, that's really nice. And they have an interesting flow in how exactly they move. Uh, between those dirtier and grimier elements into how they allow certain instruments like, uh, for example, the flutes, the piano, and the guitar to kind of raise it above that a little bit and give it a little bit of light in that fog. And they have such an interesting take on the progressive genre because you can kind of see that their heart is more in like the harder blues and the harder rock and maybe even edging towards folk. But they just like, I don't know, there is this, it's a certain way, uh, a certain formula that they use to combine all those things into their unique take on the genre and what makes, you know, Jethro Tull, Jethro Tull. And I even heard them referencing Aqualung, uh, the character in the previous song, uh, who I'm, I believe is like the homeless guy. Is this a concept album? Because I, I didn't really know. I didn't know, like, looking into it. I was just kind of going along with it. Though the band has said there was no intention to make a concept album, that only a few songs have a unifying theme. So I think that's cool because um, in the age of albums and listening to a whole side or listening to a whole album straight, which, you know, shouldn't necessarily be an age that's over, but it was much more so the case in the past than it is the present. It's cool that you at least have some sort of unifying themes flowing throughout your songs, uh, even if it doesn't take up the whole album, just to kind of give your whole album like a sense of unity, a sense of connection. I think the intro into this song is like probably my favorite thing in the song. I think the whole thing is good, but just the way that it starts up before it gets into the verse and that, that dirty riff, uh, it just sounds really nice. I love the, um, maybe it's the keyboards in the back that are providing that ambiance uh, while the flute plays on top of that. The drumming is nice, the bass, beautiful. How the bass and the flute match for a little bit and then they kind of go off and start to do their own thing. Okay, lyrics, I was not paying attention. Who would a poor man, a beggar man, a thief, if he had a rich man in his hand? And who would steal the candy from a laughing baby's mouth? Cross-eyed Mary goes jumping in again. She signs no contract, but she always plays the game. She dines in Hampstead Village on expense accounts and gruel. And the jackknife barber drops her off at school. I'm seeing some questionable lyrics as I go. <laughs> so this kid, who I'm assuming is named Mary, the title character of the song. Uh, she gets no kicks from little boys, would rather make it with a leching gray. I know what a lecher is, that's a dirty old man. Or maybe her attention is drawn by Aqualung, who watches through the railings as they play. Hmm. Now in Aqualung, in the actual song, we did get kind of like little hints that perhaps, you know, he, he likes to look at, you know, kids. And it seems that her attention is drawn by him? I'm just going to read the side note on this one <laughs> so I don't mess it up. Cross-Eyed Mary is a song about another form of low life, kind of like Aqualung, uh, but more humorous. It's about a schoolgirl prostitute, but not in such coarse terms. Okay. She goes with dirty old men because she's doing them a favor, giving people what they want because it makes them happy. It's a fun kind of song. <laughs> if you say so, Ian, if you say so. Now, now, now. Looking at it from a literal point of view, it's one of those like weird stories, right? Okay, let's let's just 
just for a second, I'm going to, I'm going to go back uh, into my 11th grade literature class, Miss Key's class, and I'm going to dig into the symbolism behind the words just a little bit. The song is called Cross-Eyed Mary. In that title alone, you have two references to religion. You got cross, you got Mary. Mm -hmm. Now, Mary, Holy Mother, mm -hmm. but this Mary is kind of the opposite. But, but, and I'm just going according to what Ian said on the side, he's doing them a favor, or she's doing them a favor, rather. So, she's doing something to make them happy as, um, what's the word? As questionable as it may be in the way that she's going about it. Then you get to the idea cross. Cross usually thinks symbolism of Christ, uh, which is usually portrayed as a good and positive and clean thing. But the play on words cross-eyed, cross-eyed is usually uh, something that's portrayed as a negative. So once again, we have this contrast in the ideas. I think it's interesting that maybe this is in some terms talking about uh, religion in an extent, that maybe uh, the direction is maybe not the best, but the, you're still helping people. Maybe it's like talking about, I don't know, the church or something. <laughs> I don't know, like Cross-Eyed Mary, she's she's trying to she's she her heart's in the right place i think that's as far as i want to go in that one <laughs> let me know what you guys thought of the song i did enjoy this song though what did you guys think did you like it did you not like this song you can join me on twitter you can join me in the comments down below i hope that you're having an amazing day and i'll talk to you later bye